So I'm going to give you a quick pro pro project overview and the goals of the project. Um, identified stakeholders, so those are people that are uh, impacted or use the canyon, um, trails, um, a lot of different groups that one doesn't think about. Um, the additional requirements that Parks uh, asked us to, to uh, fulfill over what we initially planned. Um, tell you where we're at and what the next steps we have uh, and how we're going to get to complete the project. Uh, other way. Yeah. So we proposed uh, in 2000, actually if I back up a little bit, uh, every year we have the TV auction and we raise substantial funds, roughly $100,000, and uh, we're continually looking for major projects that can uh, help the community, either fun ones like trails, uh, seawalk, uh, splash park, and uh, various things like that, as well as getting involved with uh, the humanitarian type projects that we have in the past. So we um, proposed, we're looking around for projects. We walked Elk Falls looking for potential view platform sites, about four or five Rotarians. And uh, when they showed me an unopened area where a potential viewing platform could go, I saw a suspension bridge because the canyon is unbelievably spectacular that nobody gets to see. So uh, we initially proposed a 50 to 60 meter long bridge, uh, sorry, 50 to 60 meters above the canyon and 60 to 80 meters long, the suspension bridge. A couple of different viewing platforms. And to do that, we'd have to upgrade user, the user-created trail, which I'll show you a picture of later. So it's pretty clear where the, viewing, the best viewing is because the user-created trail is there. And it's out of bounds area, but it's, it, it's beaten down by use. Um, and then one of the, the other things we wanted to do is a trail on the north side. So the suspension bridge is going to cross from the south to the north, and it's uh, about 1,000 uh, to 1,500 meters to connect up to the Dean Martin Trail, which will take you down the canyon on the other side, and that would create uh, an upper canyon loop to go with the lower canyon loop that's already there. So, um, and one of the conditions with Rotary and also uh, BC Hydro contributed some funding to the project was that this bridge will remain free for all users in perpetuity. And that's one of the conditions in our agreements that it must be free. It's not a commercial venture and it will not be. Otherwise, it's project will be cancelled tomorrow. One of the, the, the conditions that they identified at the start to put a suspension bridge in the park is obviously environmental concerns, safety concerns, um, archaeological concerns, uh, First Nations consulting, um, and big time on the safety, we got to look at the trees. Uh, and one of the, the stumbling blocks was if you build a suspension bridge and you get all these people, where are they going to park? Because the current parking lot holds maybe a dozen cars, and I've seen a couple of motorhomes down there and I giggle trying to f let them figure out how they're going to get back out. Um, so I was at a BC Hydro liaison meeting with, uh, on the John Hart project and one of their conditions, they're going to close that road for two to three years. So they have to build a temporary parking lot uh, and access to the park during those two or three years. So they proposed a gravel parking lot on their property and I made the suggestion in uh, with the uh, current president and a president-elect of Rotary in a meeting in Nanaimo and suggested they consider making that a permanent parking lot because we need that to uh, for the visitors to park so that is now in place it's built it's a million dollar plus parking lot if you haven't seen it it's uh, unbelievable and um, they constructed a trail and a bridge that crosses the penstocks. So that's in place, so that was one of the hurdles done. Uh, we raised a total, our budget is, uh, was 650, it's now uh, approaching 700,000 to get this project done. Um, we've got all the geotechnical done, uh, the environmental, the archeological, uh, all the, all the uh, approvals in place. Um, we just have one final document to complete with BC Parks as to, uh, it's called a Parks Use Permit. <coughs> Excuse me. And 
That will detail when they get to inspect the drawings and the bridge and because at the end of this we're going to donate it to the BC Parks because it's it within the park. So we have a contractor, we put out a uh, request for proposals. Uh, we did the geotechnical so we could remove as much of the unknown from the project as possible. So Rotary funded that and we put out a request for proposal and we got four bids from a uh, combination of companies uh, on the project. We selected the top two and we met with them on site and discussed their ideas and proposals of what they, they want. And um, we selected a preferred contractor and uh, got approval of the project from Parks to proceed from the 30% drawing that was submitted to 60% design drawings, which we have just received and um, that'll be more fine-tuning the project. So where we're gonna go is off of the Millennium Trail, there's a split rail fence now uh, on a corner. It's about 75 meters or so from the lower parking lot. It's a 90 degree corner. That's where we're gonna continue that about 100 meters down and that's where the bridge will start. So the bridge project uh, that we've contracted is at the end of the flat spot. So they're dealing with the uh, getting from the upper level where that trail is to the canyon edge which is about a 35 degree slope um, very wet area um, very sensitive environmentally so what they proposed is to do a elevated walkway and stairs so once you leave the top tr um, dirt trail uh, you will not touch the ground it'll be elevated walkway stairs uh, to get to get to the suspension bridge the suspension bridge, uh, I wanted it to be 70 meters point zero 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 one, so we could be higher than Capilano. However, <laughs> geotechnical says no. So um, we're going to be close, but I suspect we're going to be in the high 60s, but it is what it is. Um, so we have to build a, because the north side landing area is the one that's fixed because there's one spot that's decent and then it takes off up to uh, a big rock bluff that's too high to be on um, and I considered that with a couple of other Rotarians but it's just so high that you're out of the canyon and it's just not the spot to be even though it's high, really high. Um, so uh, the north bluff is about three meters higher than where we're going to take off from the south side so there's going to be about six <coughs> Two, two meters or so of uh, elevated area to level the bridge out so you're not climbing uphill on the other side. Uh, and there's going to be about five feet wide is what we've projected. And I think it's going to be in the 65 meter range in length. It'll be 68 meters or 65 meters above the canyon, guaranteed to make the knees wobble. Um, then from that uh, takeoff point we are doing it again an elevated walkway to that spot where I showed you the upside down tree we're going to be on that bluff but that bluff has a fracture halfway down uh, that our geotechnical pointed out so we're going to build it back from the lip about two to three meters but we're going to raise it up probably two and a half meters so that and cantilever it out towards the edge so the point is that we must see the top of the waterfall and we must see the bottom of the waterfall or it's back to redesign it's not acceptable so um, then that's that's what the contractor is going to build the other two phases are because of where the location of the um, parking lot is that BC Hydro built and the trail that they uh, connected up to the Millennium Trail there's a chunk there that's 270 meters long that is um, essentially in no man's land because it wasn't part of our original project but we inherited it because uh, we needed to get a parking lot so we need to make that trail barrier free as well so that is less than five percent grade and there's a bunch of different um, requirements so that it's it can be used by wheelchairs uh, as well to get to the the original concept was a barrier free viewing platform it's useless if nobody can get there so we're going to upgrade that trail um, to meet that standard and that's going to be curbing to prevent wheelchairs from sloughing off and falling into the bush um, 
and that's going to take place at the same time that the contractor is going to build the suspension bridge. And then the third component, which we're going to do after the bridge is completed, is the first piece, which is the barrier-free viewing um, area and, and a level area that uh, will allow you to, to view the top of the waterfall and, and the canyon above the waterfall. And um, that's something that, that's the final we're not going to start that until the bridge is done because there's going to be equipment running right through it and making a mess of it. So we're going to, we'll finish that off. So our target is to start as soon as possible um, because the contractor can start drilling the anchor holes and that's the key to everything, the anchor holes. And he can start that while his fabrication of the elevated walkway, the stairs. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Haslam Creek Suspension Bridge or Lynn Canyon or Capilano for that matter, is they're anchored at the, at the base. It's only about this high and it's a cable going back and across. So they're, the cables that we're gonna have are four cables, um, inch, inch big steel, and it's designed for safety to hold 400, 300 pound men on the bridge at the same time. So I'm pretty comfortable it's not going to collapse, because guess what, I got to cross it. <laughs> so um, we're hoping to have that finished in July, August at the latest, uh, sooner the better, but either way, it's going to uh, have a major impact, I believe, on, on tourism in Campbell River. Uh, the Nanaimo Convention Center has been following this, and they're thinking of using it as a day trip. And I told them that, that uh, they can certainly come up here and they can also go view our aquarium. And they said, you have an aquarium? So we got to do a little better, better on that, on the aquarium side to get that known as well. Um, so when this is completed, uh, the project will be in excess of $2 million tourist asset because the, the parking lot wouldn't have happened without the bridge. And the bridge wouldn't happen without the parking lot. And uh, Hydro has been exceptionally uh, supportive of this for the last four, three and a half years. Um, and they contributed funds and anything that they have done, they've done uh, environmental work, they've done um, uh, geotechnical work, they did some boreholes to look at the rock conditions of the uh, canyon where they're gonna build the tunnel. They provided that to us free of charge and that allowed us to speed up our, our studies and reduce our costs so we could put more funding into the bridge itself. And one of the other things that we have to come up with as a condition of impacting other stakeholders is there's a gravel delivery or drop every one to two years, depending on the water flow, uh, to provide gravel in the river for um, salmon, Chinook salmon mainly, um, habitat. And that gravel used to come naturally before the dam was built. So it's done every couple of years and it's done by helicopter and they're spending about twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars just on helicopter time to drop the gravel. So where the dr gravels drop is really close to where the bridge is going to go. So we're designing a cable system, land-based cable system, so they can wheel a half a meter, cubic meter of gravel out to the to the point where they want to drop it, drop it down to the water level, release it, pull it back and do it again. So this is going to save them considerable money. And one of the other hurdles with parks, BC Parks, is if you build this, we don't have any funding to maintain it. So we don't want it. And I said, no, you do. So um, we've come up with this idea of the gravel delivery system. It's to keep the stakeholder happy, but it's also a way to fund the maintenance. So the idea is that every gravel drop they do, they've got to pay the maintenance fund 5000 or some such amount. It's still a fraction of what they spent on, air, on the helicopter time. And um, so that should be in place. Uh, we don't need it this year because there's not been a strong water flow. So that's something that we commit, have to commit to as a, as a Rotary Club to do and, and we'll have that done hopefully next summer is have it completed. And we're, one of the first things the contractor does is he puts a cable across the, the river or the canyon as his working cable and that working cable, we're hoping to put it where we need it as a gravel delivery system. So we'll sort of double-edge use of that cable. Um, and I think um, the forecast that I put in my original proposal, or that Rotary did, 
uh, was that the current users up at the upper park, or sorry, the lower parking lot uh, on the top of Elk Falls is 70,000 visits a year. We're projecting doubling that, um, another 70,000. According to the visitor center, the average tourist spends 70. Five dollars a day in visiting Campbell River, so that potentially could generate five million dollars annually to the local economy. So it's a significant, and uh, even if we're wildly optimistic, it's only a million. I'll take it. Um, so we're we're very excited to get this done, and um, I hope you guys uh, enjoy it. And the other thing that's been done recently is some of the view corridors that we want for the barrier-free viewing. The trees have been cut down by parks, so um, I haven't been up there yet, but uh, that'll make the view worthwhile. I was going to show you some pictures where it, you can see where it's going to go, but uh, <laughs> such is life. And if there's any questions, uh, I'm certainly willing to answer them. Can we uh, get a copy of that uh, display, Lori, so we can share that at our meetings? I get my usual cut. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I need some more funding for the North Side Trail. <laughs> sure, I can do that. Sure. Okay. Thank you. No, oh, sorry. I just um, wanted to ask, you mentioned that uh, your projection completion in July or August. Is that like this year? Yeah. You sound like BC Parks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. Um, yes. Uh, the, the actual construction of the bridge itself from start to finish is somewhere between six and eight weeks. The, the most of the time, well, all of the time for the last three and a half years is getting permission. Um, the, it, effectively, there's about, I don't know, half a dozen holes drilled on each side of the canyon. They're tested for strength. And then the cable goes across. And once you got the cable across, you just literally put on the walkway, mechanical ways, and then the bridge is done. So it's not a big project like that. The, where we're going to get slowed down a little bit is that barrier free because we're not going to start it until it's, the bridge is done. Um, but that's really, uh, all, all that is is fencing trail and, and pack down some view platform with, uh, so like a crushed limestone rock that's compacted and, and uh, turns into virtually rock hard. It's like the trail that's there now off that new parking lot. You're like me. <laughs> um, so long, it's going to be, say, close to 200 feet. Um, and high, it'll be similar to that, 220, 240, depending how much sag there is. And I have to go to uh, Capilano with a golf range finder because I want to know how it is from the center span and the dip. And I just want to know. <laughs> it's better marketing. Yeah, that's, thank you. That's, that's been absolutely the only way to get this done because the uh, first conversation I had with Parks three and a half years ago was uh, why it would take five years to get done and uh, all the processes and all the things that have to be considered and all that stuff. So I said to him, this is probably in September 2011, I said, so not this summer, then the next one after that. And he says, you're not listening. And I said, no. I'm not, but here we are three and a half years later. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's actually been amazingly um, cooperative and everybody has been, I haven't had one negative comment from anybody. Um, I got support from everybody I've asked, almost. Um, and it's been phenomenal. Absolutely, Hydro has been totally impressed. And Parks now is to the point where they want to get it done. So they're now at the point where, you know, they're pushing to get stuff done. And it's, 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 it's coming, finally. Yes? You mentioned that uh, it's going to be uh, part of Parks BC. Is it going to be a daily user fee or something like that for parking? No. Um, mm -hmm. No. No, because that parking lot was built to replace the other one. And uh, I, that new parking lot presently is on hydro property. 
and Hydro has a, the taken over effectively where they're building the project. So Parks has given them all that property. And then after the construction period, they're going to donate back um, pro that property or, or what they didn't use back into the park. So the, this parking lot may be part of that compensation. So Hydro may give that parking lot to Parks. But they still going to have to have a legal right because the tunnel's underneath that section. So th they'll work that out in four or five years, uh, what it is. But the Hydro, um, in their contribution to, to Rotary to, to this project, <coughs> they also stated that it has to be free for all in perpetuity. So uh, because the parking lot is part of this project, it's also in our, our agreement with parks that it's free for all users. So that includes the parking lot, the trail, um, because there's no point in calling it free if you charge to park your car. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of like well, I think that's kind of died off. They finally figured that's not a good idea. But this one, um, it, it'll be in our agreement that it, that parking lot is free. The whole thing is free for in perpetuity. Actually, I better make sure that's included. <laughs> Is that a BC Park? Um, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I'm definitely going to make it in that agreement. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks.